Hello and welcome. We're very fortunate to have with us today Regina Ip. Regina Ip is a member of the Executive Council of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, but she's also chairperson and founder of the Savantis Policy Institute. And we'll be talking to her in a bit of both of these hats, but she's also someone who has done the course and has shared some of her experiences. And also, Ricky Kwok. Ricky Kwok is the Associate Vice President for Teaching and Learning here at Hong Kong U and really responsible for all of our online learning initiatives. Mm -hmm. So, Regina, what made you decide to, to do the course? Because I've heard a lot about fintech, um, but I did not really know what fintech is all about, mm -hmm. what sort of technologies are involved and what sort of new products, new business models are produced. So I decided to enroll in your course. Yeah. Was this the first online course you attended? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I, and I was very excited about it. Yeah. Um, in terms of your experience with the course, what what did you like? What, what worked? It was highly comprehensive. Mm -hmm. uh, with lectures by you, mm -hmm. I think your lectures were one of the most lucid because you are a professor. I think you, you, you have a practice or a habit of speaking clearly to students, you know. And then you, you brought together experts from different, of different backgrounds, mm -hmm. uh, lawyers, you know, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and there were interesting cases, mm -hmm. you know, which uh, helped me a lot mm -hmm. uh, to gain insight into what's really happening. Mm -hmm. So do you feel that you have a, a better understanding yes. of, of what fintech yes, is now? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And in, also at the same time, were there things about the course that, that we could do better, things that you think we could change or, or improve? Um, the, the beauty of this sort of course is, uh, although it's instructor-paced, every mm -hmm. module is not too long, mm -hmm. half an hour, you know. So for part-time learners mm -hmm. like myself, I could click on the screen, at the end of a long day mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe do one model or two model at my own pace, so long as I complete the course in six weeks, you know. So I think it's uh, highly beneficial for mm -hmm. part-time learners, whatever the age, whatever the work, mm -hmm. you know. That's the beauty of online courses. Yeah, this is something that I think, Ricky, we've been looking a lot at in the context mm. of, of online learning. Yeah, I think the one question I'd like to follow up is the uh, interaction between you and the courseware. Mm. Do you find the assessments comprehensive enough also for you to gauge your level of understanding? Um, there were quizzes. Most of the quizzes were really quite easy, you mm -hmm. know. And there was an end of course survey. Mm -hmm. I did all of them. You know, I thought those were useful. Mm -hmm. And to help myself, I jotted down notes uh, during every module mm -hmm. and I kept my FinTech notes. Mm -hmm. to make sure that I don't lose lose the knowledge. Yeah. Do you feel challenged when you work on those uh, you know, quizzes and the ad survey and all these assessment tasks? Uh, the quizzes were not that challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, the surveys were interesting mm -hmm. and the cases were very interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because compared with uh, conventional residential course where the teacher teaches in a classroom, uh, online courses would not have the sophisticated assessment tools available to us mm -hmm. yet. Like for example, uh, in a conventional course, we can ask students to do presentations, we can ask students to answer difficult problems in a sit-down examination, things like that. But uh, in an online course, we still don't have that kind of technology yet. So, uh, you know, any comment about these deficiencies? Depends on what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. If you want to have a degree, mm -hmm. of course, you need to write papers, do presentations, mm -hmm. comprehensive assessment. But remember, these uh, MOOCs, mm -hmm. they are um, highly advantageous for part-time learners. Mm -hmm. People who already got degrees or who simply want to enrich their knowledge mm -hmm. in new fields. So you don't need to be too demanding, mm -hmm. you know. I think I paid um, maybe 100 US for a search, mm -hmm. but um, that's purely for fun, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I wasn't going for grades, that sort of thing, so mm -hmm. I don't think you need to worry too much about that, mm -hmm. you know. If you don't make it too challenging, uh, you don't make it too grade-oriented, exam-oriented, more people will enroll in the course. Mm -hmm. you know? Because Hong Kong, we already had a lot of standard mm -hmm. testings, we already have a learning culture, which is 
I think excessively centered on grades, mm -hmm. you know. So it's good to have something different. And you can test our, you know, awareness mm -hmm. of content in different ways. Mm -hmm. Ask us to maybe do video online sharing, mm -hmm. take part in panel discussion, mm -hmm. rather in the conventional uh, testing methods. I have a couple of follow-up uh, mm -hmm. about your just uh, remarks. You Did you participate in the forum discussion frequently, uh, like typing in some kind of comments or questions? I did a bit of typing, but um, not a lot. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could tell me more about uh, what is a, a forum discussion, uh, the design, what's the purpose? Mm -hmm. I think the major design rationale behind the forum is to provide a channel for students to interact with each other and for the teacher to give some mm -hmm. further insights. Because in an online course, you don't have the face-to-face -face mm -hmm. discussion or meeting like this. Mm -hmm. So this is like the only communication channel available to students mm -hmm. and the teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, some teachers will try to use the forum as part of the assessment, mm -hmm. like uh, imposing some requirements that you have to post something mm -hmm. on the forum or you have to answer some questions on the forum. So this is some kind of pedagogical decisions okay. made by some other teachers. Another thing that I'd like to follow up is uh, an interesting you know, uh, decision that you made. Uh, on the one hand, you think that the qualification is not that important. You are not going after the grades, right? It's not about a degree. But, but what, what made you decide to buy the certificate? Maybe just to satisfy my vanity. <laughs> <laughs> that I did um, sort of uh, make the grades, you know, mm -hmm. and um, post it on Facebook, you mm -hmm. know. All good reasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I note that you are very accommodating. Mm -hmm. If you can't finish the course at instructor-paced mm -hmm. speed, you can redo it mm -hmm. at your own speed, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is when it surprises. So some people literally wait for the self-paced mm -hmm. to see how quickly they can do it. Mm -hmm. yeah.